Baggy Hi-Fi will begin shortly. Baggy Hi-Fi will begin shortly. Baggy Hi-Fi will begin shortly. Greetings cats and kittens, welcome once again to Baggy Hi-Fi, this YouTube channel devoted to record collecting and the vinyl community here in the UK. Been a few weeks since I last made a video, uh, even in the last video I had a, a cold coming on and a bad throat and I'm afraid I did have that uh, virus which is sweeping the nation at the moment called the 100 day cough. Uh, some of you may have had it or still are suffering with it. It's uh, not COVID, but it is a, a virus which has been felling a lot of people. So it's only really in the last few days that um, the congestion has lifted and I haven't been feeling deaf. So I've been able to listen to music again. Um, I was going to make a longer video uh, before Christmas, but time is speeding on towards the, uh, the nativity. And so um, I'm going to make a shorter video just so I do put out a video before Christmas. And this one is going to be a response to a video that Rob Eisen made a few weeks ago. I haven't seen anyone do a response to it. It was meant to be a, intended as a thread and a um, simple task that Rob was asking us to uh, comply with or, or have a go at. And that is show some monochrome vinyl album covers preferably black and white i think um and i realized that i do have quite a lot of black and white sleeve art uh, albums in my collection so i've picked out 15 and i'm going to do a couple of needle drops some of these albums i've not shown before as well so the first one i decided not to include but this is a, a runner-up because it's so obvious revolver Black and white sleeve, probably my favourite Beatles sleeve. Um, but again, a bit of an obvious one. I remember uh, first seeing this album cover as a child. I think my eldest sister had a copy of this and I would stare at the cover and think, what an interesting drawing, what an interesting collage that is. Was it, um, was it Klaus Foreman who did the sleeve? Cover designed by Klaus Foreman. Revolver. So I'm not including that in the in the 15. So here's the first of my uh, 15 and um, this is a one I've never seen shown on the vinyl community. The Fred Bison 5, an album called Beat Roots. Now this album is actually Nick Solomon who is the Bevis Frond, better known as the Bevis Frond, a UK psychedelic uh, artist. But this is his tribute to guess kind of garage music, garage punk, um, R&B of a UK flavour, it's very 60s and uh, yes yeah, a sort of fictional band and there is uh, Nick Solomon in various guises on the front cover. Quite a enjoyable album, don't play it very often, it's on the Warren Zow label, came out in maybe the late 80s, oh no 1992, there's that brown label but the cover is black and white so that's the Fred Bison 5 with beach roots next one is also on Nick Solomon's label Warren Zow which doesn't really exist anymore this is a, another obscure uh, late 80s psych revival band called the Ectomorph and the album is the Furious Sleeper and has this uh, quite nice sort of vintage style uh, illustration on the cover photo of the band on the back Played this one again recently after about 20 years and it's more of kind of the fruity psychedelic uh, style rather than uh, the garage end of things. Um, maybe the titles will give you some indication. The Fields of Agincourt, Sherlock's Brain, The Illuminated Lung. They do a cover version of uh, The Balloon Farm's A Question of Temperature. So that's a psych revival album by the Ectomorph, black and white sleeve, there's the label, when did this come out? 1991, 
the Etomov Furious Sleeper. Now this is uh, one, this is an LP cover which uh, Peter Savile designed for Joy Division, very very famous image for Joy Division's first album, Unknown Pleasures. You remember that cover was black with a white kind of, not sure what the, how they got that image, but I have the 40th anniversary edition, which is a reverse, a negative of the original cover. So it's white with the black wavy design. Very, very minimal sleeve by Peter Savile, but nevertheless monochrome. So it fits Rob Eisen's uh, bill. Next one came to mind straight away. Captain Beefheart's clear spot. Captain Beefheart and his magic band. 1972. Again, a very simple cover on the back there. What label is this on? Warner Brothers. Reprise. Captain Beefheart. This next double album I've shown before, not too long ago. It's Hawkwind, the Greasy Truckers Party. Live at the Roundhouse. Nice uh, 70s style. Influenced by, I guess, the San Francisco style of posters. Nice black and white shot of the Hawk Lords themselves there as well. Really great double. I recommend this one. I've also shown this one before. One I got fairly recently. Uh, Mark Bolan. Bootleg, I think. Uh, it's the Mark shows, the ITV TV show that Mark Boland presented in 1977, I think it was. I remember him famously featuring uh, quite a few punk bands at the time, like uh, The Damned. So these are versions, I think, from the TV show. So some of them are quite sort of truncated and faded out. Um, interesting piece of Mark memorabilia. And just before I do a needle drop, this is one, another one that came to mind. I haven't listened to this one in ages. Um, it's a spoken word album by a New York uh, sort of performance artist, stroke comedian, Eric Bogosian. I'm not sure what happened to Eric Bogosian. I think he maybe went into TV. But this is called Voices of Amer Selections from Voices of America. It's from a performance at the ICA in London in 1982. And side one is really brilliant, really funny. Uh, Voices of America is Eric doing um, kind of parody of American radio and it's really gross, quite bizarre, very funny. Could do a needle drop from this. If you ever see this album, which is, I guess you're not going to see it around too much, but uh, yeah, Eric Bogosian, Selections from Voices of America on the neutral label. Okay, we're going to do a needle drop of Eric Bogosian now. Everywhere. If you're fat, you need help. You need Fat Fighter. The new proven formula that dissolves fat as it accumulates. Now you can eat as much as you like all day long and not gain a pound. Just take two Fat Fighters before you start eating, then eat ice cream, cake, candy, butter, potato chips, spaghetti, beer, thick cream soups, pies, heavy breads, french fries, syrups, puddings, lard, milkshakes, chocolate, pancakes, waffles, pate, oil, grease, pizza, cookies, and not gain a pound. <laughs> that fighter is all you need, and it's guaranteed. And remember, that fighter contains no harmful ingredients, just pure dextroamphetamine sulfate. Here we are in the second half of this uh, showing of black and white sleeves of albums, uh, as requested by Rob Eisen. This one I've shown recently, this excellent double album of early status quo, Master's Collection, The Pie Years, very, very heavy vinyl. Uh, not only includes their psych recordings for Pi, but also the really early incarnation as a kind of garage pop band, R&B group. Really do recommend this one. Another very well-known black and white sleeve that came to mind with this thread 
is Relics by Pink Floyd. Wonderful compilation, possibly one of the best comps ever because it includes Arnold Lane, C. Emily Play and some other prime Sid Barrett era and early uh, non-Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd. Uh, this is a reissue because you can see by the sticker. I think I mentioned that one of the time I showed this that uh, there is a uh, version of this album with a coloured sleeve which really doesn't work at all. Uh, Nick Mason did the original illustration there in all its black and white glory. Now this next album will, re re will reveal my arty side because it is by a performance artist. I may only show one side of the sleeve because um, he was a notorious Hermann Nitsch a uh, really notorious uh, German performance artist. Also a musician though, so this album has some of the music he would, very kind of heavy, choral, doomy, gloomy uh, music, uh, dare I say, very Germanic. And his performances were very, very vis literally visceral because he would pull apart uh, animal carcasses and, you know, bathe in the, the organs and the blood. So I'm not gonna show the other side because it is pretty horrific, but, um, so is the front cover as well, but uh, I'm not going to pronounce that, but um, extremely uh, cathartic music, extremely, uh, there's lots of screaming and it's, um, you know, you may be in the mood for this sometime, but uh, Herman Nitsch, that's uh, another very gross black and white sleeve. As you will probably know if you watch Baggy Hi-Fi regularly, I'm a big fan of uh, Garage and Psych and and also of those comps that put together Collect 60s uh, Psych and Garage. So this is one from the collection, Acid Visions, uh, Best of Texas Punk and Psychedelia, all original 60s recordings on the Vox label from 1983. Quite nice design there, black and white. And also the Pebbles compilations, because quite a lot of the Pebbles um, 60s compilations were in black and white. Pebbles Volume 9. This is a bit of a favourite. Pebbles Volume 12. And then finally, going into the 80s, uh, Butthole Surfers. This is not really one of their well-known albums. It's in fact, I think it's a sort of official bootleg. It's double live, very disturbing black and white uh, doctored photo there. Uh, so Double Live, um, very loud it play, they say on the back. The record number 3,733 of 10,000, so not really that limited either. Um, but I'll serve as, I think, the only band who really successfully combined the punk aesthetic with the, the psychedelic aesthetic, that is a very kind of acid-tinged hallucinatory, bizarre version of psychedelia. Um, so this gives is a kind of record of the chaotic, um, confrontational live shows from the time, from 1989. Uh, I say that image is really, really disturbing, I think. I don't play it very often because it is really kind of bootleg quality. I think it's recorded on a digital tape recorder, Panasonic digital machine. So I'm going to do a needle drop from this though just to lead us out of this video. Thanks everyone for watching or subscribing during uh, this year of 2023. Christmas is coming. Uh, the next video I make might be in, probably be in between Christmas and New Year. Uh, vinyl finds. I do have quite a lot to show. Uh, every, just thank you Rob Eisen for setting this thread. Um, I haven't seen anyone else respond so I thought I would. Um, hope you enjoyed it um, and all that remains is for me to say is a very happy Christmas and very best wishes for 2024. Bye for now. Well,